guys, I'm here with Callie and her new album is nominated for Alternative Country Album of the Year for the CCMA Awards after midnight. Congratulations. <laughs> How did you find out that you were nominated? My friend Mallory Johnson, who's another fantastic artist, she always checks these nomination things like very early in the morning. So we knew we were in the running. I just get like a psycho text from Mallory first thing in the morning. She's like, you're nominated. I'm like, I was sleeping. You know, yeah. So Mallory's always up on it for me. But yeah, we found out that morning and then just started you know, alerted the presses and the day went crazy. But it was it was very special because I made this record with three of my best friends and we kind of just did it to say, screw it. This is the music we want to make. This is what we love and we'll see what happens. And and here we are. So it's a little crazy. You're from Stratford, which is a hop, skip and jump next door here. So what's it like being a nominated artist in like practically your hometown? Well, that's the thing, right? So actually I went to Medway High School, which is just 10 minutes outside of London. So London is like a second hometown. We moved to Stratford, Ontario when I was 18. I went to the University of Guelph. So all of Southwestern Ontario is really the old stomping grounds. I played so many gigs all across Southwestern Ontario. I moved to Nashville about seven and a half years ago. So I, I still, I had to come, come up home for this, but we did a big show in Stratford on Thursday night, which was really, it was the first time we got to, you know, play this record in Canada. Uh, so it was really, really special to have the hometown crowd. And and being able to have this CCMA right here at home, like my family's able to come around. And, and so I got an Airbnb and they're kind of coming in and out. And it's really special. It's amazing. What kind of feedback have you gotten from this album? Because it is different. Your sound is different. Yes. I mean, <laughs> feedback at country radio is high. It's too country. We can't play it. Um, and the feedback, you know, outside of that has been really, really just, I feel very honored and it's been very positive and, and it's been wonderful. And, and we got to call a lot of our heroes, guys from Union Station that play for Allison Krauss, guys for the, from the Time Jumpers, which is a Grammy-winning Western swing band, to make this record. And, I, you know, I feel so honored to have my voice, you know, beside their level of musicianship. It's really incredible. So, you know, we're very proud of the record that we made and how we made it and what the songs say and what they stand for. And to have it be listened to and lifted up and honored, that's, that's gravy. But it's very, very special. Yeah, and your new single, Three Quarter Time, is so cute. It's quite the tribute, and each line is means something. What are some of your favorite songs by these legends? Um, my favorite song of all time is a Don Williams song called If Hollywood Don't Need You. Have you heard it? No. Um, it's, you know, the thing about Don Williams is all of his songs have that backbeat feel that make you feel like lazy and coming home. So, uh, I'm Over You by Keith Whitley is another one. Uh, and also I'm No Stranger to the Rain, uh, Misery and Gin by Merle Haggard, uh, George Jones, I'm a Choices Girl, uh, Dolly Parton, obviously, I'm sorry, everybody thinks it's cheesy, but it's I Will Always Love You for the win. There's a lot of good ones, but it is I Will Always Love You. Um, you know, Pam Tillis, I'm, I'm a big fan of as well, which, I, but my problem is I always take the ballad song off the record that no one cared about. That's the one that I loved. Great, looking forward to that. Genre bending. Yeah. Like, like people are being more accepting of it and yet you're still finding that it's not quite there for you yet. I don't think that music belongs in boxes at all. I think that it's fluid and that it's music. And so for me, it's, I love folk music and I love bluegrass music and I love roots music and traditional country and, and, and adult contemporary and jazz. And, and I love all of those things. And I'm not composed enough to put that together intentionally, it's completely accidental. Like whatever happens is sort of a natural happenstance of, of the music that I have, you know, truly steeped myself in since I was a really small child. And I was just fortunate to have parents that were, you know, both musicians and, and really like sent me towards the good stuff. And then I went down my own rabbit hole. You know, but I like I know very little about a lot of musical genres and I know quite a lot about a few as well. And so it's all it's all by happenstance. And I think as artists, what we do is we just we put our truest selves out there and, and we hope that people resonate with it. And I think with this record, it's been really special that I get I've gotten a lot of feedback of, of people really loving it. And that means a lot to me. So it's all positive. It's all good. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to that music video. It sounds really good. <laughs> I think, I think too, like putting out music videos these days, it's got to be hard to be extra creative and not be like a traditional, typical thing. But then when you put out a song like three quarter time, it gives you opportunities for play. The minute we wrote this song, 
And I went out and I played it on stage the very next day at a, at a writer's round downtown Nashville. And, and it, it kind of instantly became my like forged in the fire theme song because it was my story and it was my truth. And I think a lot of my friends and artists and writers in Nashville, they got that and they understood, yeah, it is hard to stick to what you want to do, you know, with the way that this industry can be. And, and so it became my armor that I went out into the world with every night to play these shows. And, and very quickly I started to visualize what the video would be because it was something I had lived. It was walking the tip jar around the honky tonk downtown Nashville, asking for tips from a bunch of drunk people while you're on stage with a seven piece band and nobody's listening because they're, bu they're busy with their bachelorette party. But that is something we've seen time and time again, day in and day out in Nashville. And, and I love that Broadway is there and I love that people can come experience it. And I love all of the things about Nashville, but this song is, you know, the quintessential, you know, ballad honky tonk singer story. And we just, if you haven't been to Nashville, it's probably, it's new. It's something you've never seen. So we really just brought that story to life in a bit of a cheeky way. I throw a little sass in there and I'm very excited. I think CMT is going to put it out for us in January. So we will see. Sounds great. Well, congratulations. Looking forward to what you've got coming up. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to see you.